Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Game to the Com video, we're going to be talking about the Radeon RX 480, which of course is the upcoming Polaris 10 based GPU from AMD. Now, this video is going to be a bit different from the normal ones because we're going to be talking about the launch of the card and we're going to talk about other bits and pieces, including more image or images of the GPU and a few other bits and pieces. But this one's primarily going to be focused on supply, demand, pricing. And basically you getting the damn thing because it's okay for impressive benchmarks but ultimately if you can't use it in your system it means very little so one of the problems Nvidia have had or more specifically you if you're trying to buy the card have had with the GTX 1070 and the 1080 is that price gouging is a real big problem simply because the amount of cards available in retail is really small. It's a pretty simple problem. If 100 people want to buy a GPU but there are only 50 available, there's going to be a lot of disappointed individuals. And fortunately, from what AMD are telling AIBs and from what they are telling retailers, there should be a decent supply of cards. And supposedly, they have been actually stockpiling the RX 480s because they're basically waiting for, well, unprecedented demand. It's fair to say that the RX 480s, well, actually the entire RX 400 line is really anticipated, but I imagine the 480 is going to be the most popular, but I wouldn't be surprised if quite a few uh, folks also are very interested in the 470. Now, do remember, and we went through this yesterday, there are only going to be the standard reference coolers available at launch. This was confirmed by Overclockers UK, um, a couple of members of their staff, but they did point out that don't worry, they're going to be running cool, there's not any problems with them, the reference coolers are absolutely phenomenal and supposedly it keeps the GPU running quite quite nice temperatures, let's say 60 to 70 degrees under load with fire strike. Well, if you want to believe that, of course, ultimately, we're not seeing live reviews yet, but, you know, your mileage may vary. So, what about the GPUs and what about the pricing? I did touch on this yesterday, but I do want to just go over it one more time. Um, now, ultimately, it may vary in your region. You might get a little bit of price gouging based upon currency conversions and all of the normal stuff. But the cards will be available on June 29th. And they're going to cost the following. 99 US dollars, 149 US dollars, 199 US dollars, and finally 229 US dollars. They will be for the RX 460, the RX 470, the 4 gigabyte RX 480, and finally the most expensive is obviously the 8 gigabyte RX 480, which is going to cost the 229. Honestly speaking, I think, and I've not reviewed the cards yet, but for the price differential between the 4 and the 8 gigabyte models, I would personally always go with 8 gigabytes. Now, it's not that 4 gigabytes is going to run out of memory at 1080p now. You're probably going to be okay in the vast majority of games. There are certainly some cases, especially if you're going high levels of AA or very, very, very large texture quality games. But just generally, 4 gigabytes is okay. But honestly, 8 gigabytes, you might as well go for it. Because once again, you never know what you may decide to do in 3, 4, 5 months time. You might decide, eh, I'm just going to go ahead and buy a second card and I'll run both of them in Crossfire. And those two cards, 8 gigabytes, you're absolutely good. Now, obviously with DirectX 12, you don't get memory duplication. Well, not 100% memory duplication anyway, once they figure that feature out 100%. But generally speaking, the memory is mirrored. So let's say, for sake of argument, each card has to have the same amount of data so it's not like you're getting 16 gigabytes if you're running two 8 gigabyte cards you're only getting 8 gigabytes of GPU memory which I'm sure most of you know but it's important to just point that out to you all and say yeah personally I would say the 229 8 gigabytes is going to be the most popular model but then again maybe that's going to be a problem and everyone's going to buy it and therefore it could be hard to get on launch we don't know 
What else is there to discuss? Well, there have been some leaks available on the internet, as they tend to be leaks available on the internet. And, um... Most of these are coming from China. Uh, one website, PC Online, has posted a freaking ridiculous number of images of a teardown of the card. And it looks kind of sexy, I'm going to admit. It's very simplistic design, I don't mean that in a bad way. You can just see the memory, obviously, uh, petering around the board. And it very much is within the official guidelines of the GPU. There's, you know, there's a whole bunch of power regulators there. And it all looks very clean, very elegant. Um, which is basically what we want. Uh, there is also a little more regarding the... RX 480 and Radeon settings, but not anything particularly amazing. Now, I want to also cover one last point, because there were some folks who were reporting that the reviews could actually be released earlier um, than the June the 29th. So, for example, they could pop up June 25th, but that's supposedly not the case. A couple of websites are reporting that they don't have the final retail driver at the moment and they've also not been given approval by AMD to release the release the review earlier now how that basically works if you're unfamiliar with review embargoes is it's very simple let's say that you get a piece of hardware it may come into your possession June 15th, and I'm just giving an example, but the the actual date that you can post the review might be June 21st or June 25th or what have you. Basically, you are given it early so that you've got enough time to do testing on that GPU to make sure that, let's say, that you're given a dud, let's say that you're very unlucky or that you have problems running it on your system configuration or that you're running a whole bunch of tests on the card or whatever. Obviously it takes a while to then write those uh, words down and to get the actual review done with some level of competency. Basically the whole reason for a lot of embargoes is it's just to make sure that all websites get their reviews done with a high level of quality plus with the latest driver revisions that they can get. Now, we are being told that we will be able to get an RX 480 GPU for review. It's probably going to be just after launch. Um, that's what we're being told by a couple of individuals from AMD and a couple of other companies as well. Simply because everyone is trying to get hold of these cards for review. So we will be definitely reviewing them and Pascal. So if you're curious on my personal take on the cards, definitely do stick around. Because we will be reviewing them 100%. I'm trying to also get some of the lower end cards like the 460 to review as well because I'm quite curious how they work but obviously it depends on number of GPUs available um, but in the meanwhile my own personal uh, review is going to be quite busy because I've got some other hardware coming that's a long story and I'll probably discuss that in a vlog or something in the next, not too distant future but I'm basically working on getting an SSD to review or something similar, probably an SSD, uh, some keyboards, and also a processor and motherboard is on the way to be reviewed. And I'm also working working on Scorpio as well. Plus, I've got a few other bits and pieces that I'm trying to work on, and I still need to finish the script for the HDR analysis, which is completely and utterly off topic. But um, I've not really had a chance to talk to you all about this, so I figure I might as well throw it into this video. Anywho, um, getting off the subject of digression, the bottom line is, with embargoes, it's typically to make sure that the reviewer does a good job. You are given a good set of options at launch of the card. And finally, it's to make sure that there's no funny business. So, for example, um, and I'm not pointing to any websites here, but certain websites can rush reviews or have rushed reviews. And what happens in those instances is that they may not have done enough due diligence on the testing of the thing. And then they basically just stick up results, which may not be conducive to what is reality. Um, so, yeah, just, just be aware of that. 
Um, and when you're benchmarking, sometimes you might get a hinky result. So, for example, it might be that in the background you don't realise it, but your test system it just happened to be like, no, fuck you, I'm just running antivirus or something like that. And obviously I might be slightly exaggerating here. And it's going to really screw up your, uh, your 3D Mark run. But some instances reviewers won't run things two or three or four times, which is typically what I do. Um, which is a bit of an insight into how I review things. Personally, when I review products, I do it the following, and this is a basic idea. I will test the product to make sure it works, obviously, and then I will usually run at least three times, possibly four to five times, if I find that there is a variance in the result, and then I'll take the average of that. So let's say I get 65 frames a second in one, 66 frames in another, 68 in another, 68 in another, then I'll say, okay, then the average is 66 or something like that. You get the idea. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'm sorry this went on to a completely ranty slash uh, chatty one. That was not supposed to be this long. But um, anyway, hopefully you found it somewhat informative slash useful. Do stick with us. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming up on the channel. I'm going to be insanely busy over the next couple of weeks. For those who are messaging me regarding Scorpio analysis, it is being worked on. It was a 3,500 word script. I'm not joking. And it took about 30 minutes of audio. So now I'm removing any excess crap from it. So it's still about 29 minutes, unfortunately. But it also means there's a hell of a lot of images and, I guess, technical information I need to add in. So I'm actually putting putting in calculations on the various performances. Basically, it's how I want to do a lot of technical analysis from now on. So it's going to serve as like a, a benchmark of how we're going to be putting stuff together on the channel. So hopefully you guys like it and respond well to it. Hopefully that's going to be up either tomorrow or the day after at latest, and then I've got to go straight into reviews. So it's going to be a really busy couple of weeks for me. But for those who are just joining us, I really appreciate your support and all the messages on Facebook. I'm going to get going because I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do, but hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And uh, normal stuff, like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, send me cookies, and all of that stuff, that would be really appreciated. But I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.